welcome to St. Philip's on this autumnal morning. We'll get used to this new sound system. Um, our opening hymn this morning is 483. And if it weren't um, if it weren't for a Sunday, this would be the feast of St. Francis. And so we're going to use the Eucharistic prayer D, the creation one. So please be ready to make your responses as it, it's more participative. So we we'll open with 483, John. How many people? Which verses? Verses 1 and 2 of 483. Verses 1 and 2. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, 
and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We'll Good. read the psalm. Responsibly, by full verse. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. You, you have, have brought a vine out of Egypt. Egypt. You cast out the nations and planted it. You prepared the ground for it. It took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shadow, and the towering cedar trees by its boughs. You stretched out its tendrils to the sea, and its branches to the river. Why have you broken down its wall, so that all who pass by pluck all its graves? The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it, and the beasts of the field have grazed upon it. Turn now, O God of hosts, look down from heaven, behold and tend this vine, preserve what your right hand has planted. The hymn of the Gospel is 458. We shall sing verse 1 before and verse 2 afterwards. around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time came, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect the produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce of at harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you 
and given to people that produces fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and Pharisees heard this, they realized that he was speaking of them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowd because they regarded him as a prophet. The good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Because it's very hard when we look at something in a historical context. You know, there's a beautiful hymn that I love, which uh, um, were you there when they crucified my Lord? And it's like as if we were spectators. Maybe if we were there at all. Or we're looking back through the binoculars of history on this event and focusing on something that happened so long ago. And yet, Everything that is in the gospel is for today. I changed the last verse of that hymn, Were You There When We Crucified the Lord? And I changed it to, I was there when I crucified my Lord. I was there. We did this. This was our action. And when I was re reflecting upon this parable for today, I thought, who were these servants that abused the vineyard, abused the privilege of using it? Who were these people that, when, the, when his, his servants came to, to claim the revenue, to claim the rent, to ask, can, I, can you pay my Lord for what he has allowed you to do? Who were they? Were they for us? We were the ones. And who were they when they sent him, eventually sent his son who came? Who were they that killed him? That was us also. You see, the story is really about love. And although the, we're reminded in this story that the, the, the stone rejected by the builder becomes the cornerstone, which is Jesus. And that cornerstone is love. That cornerstone is love for you and for me. That although we killed his son, although through our selfishness and, and sin we killed his son, he loved us even more. He put his arms of embrace around us and said, that's okay. 
That's okay. I can mend this. I can fix this. I can put this right. All you have to do is turn to me and ask. And I struggle with the simplicity of this. I struggle with the simplicity of God's love for us. Most of us were brought up to achieve stuff. Most of us were brought up in, a, in societies that said, you know, you go to school, you work hard, you get the grades. If you're smart enough, you go to university. Or maybe if you're smart enough, you don't go to university and get out there into the world of commerce and making fortunes, doing something or other, I don't know. But, it, but, but whatever it is, you have goals and you have to achieve them and you attain them. And if you attain them, you're a good person. But that's not what Jesus says. Not that we're not called to attain goals. Jesus says, you're a good person because God, my Father, created you good. Because God, my Father, loved you before you were conceived. And because you guys screwed up. You messed up. You messed it all up. And when people came to say, listen, turn back. Come back to your father. Come back to the Lord that loves you. You beat them up. So in the end, I, the Son of God, who was there before the creation of time, out of love for my father, said, I'll go. I will go to them, if that's what you want. And I will be loved for them. And then they've got to know that they are loved. And you killed him also. But that's not the end of the story. The story is, do your worst, and God still loves you. Do your worst, and God will be there for you, if only you turn to Him. But when you turn to Him, if you turn to Him, then turn your life around a little bit. Seek to do good. It is a, no coincidence to me that this would have been the Feast of St. Francis. Because Francis in the Christian Church, particularly the Catholic Church, was, was held as one of the saints that most emulated Christ. To the degree that before he died he had the marks of Christ on his body, the wounds of Christ on his body. And what did he say? Well, a bit like Jesus in his day, he challenged the status quo. He challenged those who were, who believed that they were righteous with God. And the story goes of Francis, and I'm sure most of you know, that when he received this call from God to renounce all earth, earthly things, he was called before the bishop, and the bishop dressed him down on behalf of his father, and said, you know, your father wants you to be in commerce and do all this kind of stuff, and if you walk away, leave your privilege behind you and, and Francis took off his clothes and walked out of the bishop from the bishop totally naked and found sacks and made his clothes out of sackcloth and he saw as Jesus saw that it was those that were most despised that were most loved by God that it was the sinners who didn't pretend to be virgins they were honest they were sinners. It was to hit to the poor and the needy and the broken that Francis was called, just as Jesus, his master, had been called. When I first came to the United States, I think it was when I first came, might be the second time I came, there used to be a dollar store, dollar movie theater down in Albuquerque. I think it's still there, somebody told me. But one night I went there for a double header, and it was the story of Francis and Claire, brother, son, sister, moon and the story of Romeo and Juliet, both by Zaffarelli. And it, I, couldn't, I couldn't help but see the comparison between the love of Francis and Claire that they had for each other, but had for God above all things. 
which was very life-giving and generative, and Romeo and Juliet that ended in the death of both of them. It was really kind of irony, uh, ironical that they put them on together. The love of God is generative. We're called to be good tenants in our vineyard. We're called to turn to those who need it and sort of say, I will share with you the good things that God has given me. We're called to be sensitive to those who are broken, to those who are broken hearted, to those who are poor and needy, and turn to them and say, you are my brother and my sister. I will reach out to you. I won't talk words of love. I will show my love in what I do. And I think in that way, we join with the Lord in sharing the mission of the vineyard we've been given to work in. We call, and when the, when the Master does send his son, has sent his son, is sending his son to us today, we will turn to him and say, we are here, what is your will for us? So that we can, <coughs> excuse me, so that we can preach the good news. And if necessary, as St. Francis said, we can use words, but it will be in action. Amen? Amen. <coughs> and my nice mask of the Diocese of the Rio Grande is making me cough and sneeze. We believe in one God, the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. He, by the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look, look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Most loving and gracious Father, all powerful God, we, your children, come to you in our need to make our requests known and to give you thanks and praise. We ask that you hear us and guide us as we seek to serve you. Father, we pray for our world and its needs. We pray for the places where war ravages the land, particularly the Middle East and Africa. Father, help those who live in terror each day, in fear for their lives, bring them peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, we pray for those who are hard at work on the 
wildfires in the western United States. Be with them, keep them safe, and help them to be effective as they battle these extreme fires. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for those who suffer from poverty and famine and who do not know where their next meal to feed themselves or their children will come from. Father, soften hard hearts to generously share the gifts you have given us to care for our brothers and sisters in need and feed the needy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those fleeing from violence and seeking safety, especially the children. Help us to respond to their needs, especially those on the southern border of this state. Bless them, Lord, as they seek the security we take for granted. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our country, Lord. May we all learn to love and serve you as first in our lives. We pray for our President Donald Trump, our Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham, and all who have been called to serve your people in public office. Lord, surround them with wise advisors, that they may lead your people in ways that are just. Guide them by the power of your Holy Spirit to be free of personal ambition for the good of the people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the people of God throughout the world, and especially for our leaders. We pray for Bishop Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, for Bishop Michael Hunt, our bishop. We lift up to you all the clergy of the Diocese of the Rio Grande. Father, be with them as they seek to lead your people in these difficult and challenging times. May they be filled with the power of your spirit as they seek to discern your will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all those throughout our world, country, and state that have been diagnosed with COVID-19. Be with them, Lord, and guide those responsible for their care. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray also, especially at this time, for the President of the United States and for those co-workers of his and family members of his that have been infected by COVID-19. We ask you, Lord, to heal him and them for the good of this country and for the well-being of and love that they have for one another. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for the churches of the Rio Grande Valley. We pray for Our Lady of the Valley, Albuquerque, St. Matthews, Las Lunas, St. Philip's Rio Communities, Berlin, Epiphany, Socorro, St. Paul's TRC, and the churches that meet at Hillsborough and Magdalena. Lord, be with us all as we seek to grow in your mercy and love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our health and social care professionals, for our first responders, our EMTs, firefighters, and police officers. We thank you for their service to our communities. Lord, keep them safe in these challenging times. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who serve this nation in our armed forces. Lord, keep them safe as they seek to protect the people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the staff and students of New Mexico Tech and Berlin Consolidated Schools as they seek to deliver and continue their education in these challenging times. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the Rio Grande chapter of the Guardians of the Children, guided in its work as they seek to make safe the most vulnerable in our communities. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who serve the needs of our communities. We pray for the work of Puerto Socorro, Socorro Food Pantry, and St. Philip's Food Pantry. We thank you for the generosity of those who dedicate time and resources to enable them to serve your people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who are sick. We pray for Bill, Julie, Ivan, Tony, Barbara, Chip, Joanne, Justin, Lizzie, Patty, Guilford, Dot, Rick, Diane, Jenny, Jean, Dale, and all those who have asked for our prayers. Lord, you have told us through your Son that if we pray with faith, all things
things are possible. We commend those we pray for to you, that they may be healed in body, soul, mind, and spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those in prison. Heavenly Father, we recognize that we are all sinners in your sight, redeemed by the love of your Son. Look with mercy on those in prison that their hearts may be turned to you and receive your redeeming love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those with special and private intentions for the following. For Terrence, Fred, Bill, Beth, <coughs> Pete, Lawrence, <coughs> Mackenzie, Chris, Emma, Josh, Larry, Virginia, Trish, Tony, Tommy, Dennis, Kathy, G, Carol, Sue, John. Lord, you know our needs before we ask. We pray that you hear the needs of these, your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, or whose faith is known to you alone. We remember Johnny, Charlie, Taylor, Tommy, Dorothy, and Juanita, and others we remember. Remember Johnny, I think. Al. Caleb. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for the many good gifts you give us, for being able to reach out in celebration through live streaming of services, for the work of our missions committee, for gentle showers to heal the land, and the promise of more rain, for the fruits of the earth, the flowers and trees, the beauty of your creation, we ask that we may always be grateful and remember that all good things come from you, that we may rightly give you thanks and praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask for blessing and prayers for those celebrating birthdays during this week, especially Father Steve. And we ask God's continued blessing on those celebrating anniversaries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, in the silence of our hearts, or spoken aloud, let us lift our own prayers to the Lord. Thanksgiving for Anne's healing. Pray for those in Central New Mexico Correctional. Lord, hear the prayer of your people, and what we have asked for faithfully grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 And now, let's confess our sins to Almighty God and to one another. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have sinned, sinned against you. you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will, and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. And may our all-loving, almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's share with one another the Lord's peace. And this is the announcement time. The announcement I have, I, we prayed for Johnny Adlington. Uh, Johnny was 94 and died a couple of, I think she died Friday night. Her husband was a dean in this diocese and served in this church for many years. And I believe he died 24 four years ago and he's at home in our ground area. And his, um, Johnny's daughter said that when it is feasible for them to do so.
Johnny will be coming to join me with the saints that are behind us. Um, I told her that we were moving into a slightly new home just across the way there, and she seemed to be delighted with that. So, so, um, so that's the only announcement I have. Um, oh, sorry, there is a second announcement, and that is that the bishop reiterated last week, and we're, we're all doing it, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, bishop reiterated last week that if anybody is in any of our facilities and is not wearing a mask, they are to be invited to do so, and if they're not prepared to put a mask on, they must be asked to leave. And I think he is incredibly concerned about the increase, rapid increases in uh, COVID diagnoses in the diocese at the moment. I think they were going up by 40% a day recently. So, so, um, so, so he just reiterated it. And that is for our own safety and other concern, I think, for, for us. So we all have to probably be reminded that we need to be diligent. And with that, that's it, I think. So we're, we've got our, some of the free music, I believe. Okay. Um. Planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. 
By your will they were created and have their being. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us rulers of creation, but we turned against you, and we betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return through the prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill the law, to open for us the way of peace. By his blood he reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining our voices. Jo we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. <laughs> death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord, God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion Make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve in the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our High Priest, to whom, with the Holy Spirit, you give your church honor and glory and worship. From this generation, to the next. Amen. Amen. And now, let's pray the prayer that our Lord and Savior gave to us. Our Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. And these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Amen. of the body of your Son, and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord be with you. 
and also with you. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of our all-powerful, all-loving God come down upon you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. The recessional hymn is verses 1 and 2 of 518. Verses 1 and 2 of 518. Happy birthday, Father Steve. Thank, Thank you. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.